Welcome back to Ribbon Candy Hooking. I'm Deanna. It's great to see you. Oh my gosh, it's been punishingly uh, tiring lately with the book launch this past weekend. We have so much to catch up on, but for this moment, I'm sat back down. I just got back in yesterday uh, in the evening and um, I sat back down and immediately thought, what am I supposed to be doing right now? I've been so focused on the book party for so long and I thought, Oh my gosh, Magpie's coming up, right? Magpie, volume number four, Marshmallow World, the winter issue. The deadline is November 10th. I want to be thinking about that. And I know for that issue for myself, what are you sending something in to, you know, something wintry, something Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, winter in general, anything, right? That would fit the winter months issue. Uh, make sure you have it into Magpie Times Magazine at gmail.com. Uh, um, before November 10th or on November 10th. And, um, and I'm going to be putting in, do you remember last Christmas for the month of December through the new year? I think between Christmas and new year, I did that Jane Austen time. We did the Jane Austen advent calendar for our special product last December. We have something different this time. And, um, and, and I did everything, all things Jane Austen, including a bunch of patterns. So I'm kind of returning to that because I'm launching a new sort of, we didn't say choose your own adventure. We said elect your own entanglement. Um, we have a new character coming for this holiday season, another historical figure that you will know and recognize, I'm sure. But I wanted to recap the Jane Austen story, kind of reprise that a little bit for those of you who came on board with the brand in the past year and you missed that whole segment on Jane Austen and all of those patterns. I'm going to do an article kind of recapping that and I'm going to introduce a couple of new Jane Austen patterns for that that I would like to hook really quickly. So I have a pattern drawn here. This is going to be in Magpie. This is one of the new Jane Austen patterns, and this is called Jane at the Tavern. Now, what I want to do with this is I want to hook it onto one of my colors of burlap um, and not hook the background, right? Leave some of the background showing. So I bought a bunch of um, sort of uh, Halloween, Thanksgiving colors of colored burlap, and we're going to talk about that in just a second that I really love, and I'm going to transfer onto one of them. So just to let you know, let's look at them first. I've got a pretty gray. It's like a dark gray. This is actually called, this is called charcoal. I got these from Fabric Wholesale Direct. Um, doesn't say how much they were, but they really weren't much. Fabric Wholesale Direct, lots of colors of burlap. Uh, very nice for hooking, right? If you like hooking it to burlap at all, this is a great option. So I've got this nice color that's called charcoal. I've got this color that is called lilac. It's pretty, pretty true to the color on the monitor there. Lilac. I've got bright orange, which I was thinking of as a Halloween color or a Thanksgiving color. I'm not sure. Nice orange, right? That's just orange. And I have purple. And the purple is really dark. It's like this. It kind of has a bit of an indigo hint to it and um, really, really nice deep color. I think I'm going to go with the dark purple because I, I'm, I haven't color planned this at all, but I'd like to do something unexpected. And um, obviously I'm going to hook lighter colors onto it. So I think I'm going to hook onto the burlap, this pattern. Now I already have it traced with fiber tape, so I'm right. This is my transfer method that I love and trust and have researched hugely. Um, I'm using this to transfer onto it, my, my um, Jane at the Tavern. So I'm going to do that in just a minute. But what I'm going to do first is ask you, what, how do you think I'm going to transfer onto this backing? Because normally, I, my method is I use fiber tape and a Sharpie. Right? Sometimes a light box, box and a Sharpie. Sometimes, depending on what it is, uh, a transfer pen, a heat transfer pen, a sulky, um, still black, right? Still black like a Sharpie. What do I do with something like this? Do I transfer with a Sharpie, uh, black permanent Sharpie business as usual and hope that I can see the lines okay? You think that's going to work out for this one? Because I don't think that's going to work out for this one. I'm going to trace this out and then I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I am using Sharpies, but I'm using silver Sharpies, not white. Not white because white Sharpies are actually paint-based and I believe they're even oil-based. So I'm not using a white Sharpie. I am going to use a silver Sharpie. Right now, I'm going to put the fiber tape on the backing and I'm going to sew around the edges because burlap definitely wants to unravel, right? 
I don't want that to happen <laughs> uh, before I get a chance to do anything. So I'm going to get the piece ready and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to transfer it with you here so you can see how that silver Sharpie works out transferring onto a much darker background material. Now, if you're watching me struggle here, which apparently you are, I just have to say, aren't you used to, when you cut your own material, aren't you used to just pulling one of the threads across so easily so that you can see the gap and cut on it? Well, for whatever reason, with this burlap, that is incredibly hard. So I got it in the end. I got there in the end. What I want to see is see this line. That's my cutting line, so I know I'm cutting straight. Uh, it's remarkably hard. So I'm hoping that that isn't a sort of indicator that this is going to be hard to hook into. I don't see why it would be, but I'm a little bit surprised that it was that hard to pull one thread out. Let's see how it goes. Alright, now I just went and sewed around the edges a little zigzag stitch. You can do that. You can just tape it if you want to tape it, right? Just make sure that it doesn't unravel or do it with your serger. Do it with uh, zigzag stitch. I always do zigzag stitch. Just creature of habit. I'm just going to center my piece as I always do. Not really sure uh, if I want to put a border on it yet. So you can see I have indications for myself um, of how I, you know, where I want it to end. But I'm not going to draw the border on because I'm just not sure. I'm just not sure what the vision is yet. So the main thing is I want to be sure that it's centered and that when I transfer with the silver, it comes out really, really, really well. So let's see. I'm going to make sure it's pretty lined up. Just doing this by eye, of course. This is the line that I really care about, right? Because that's the only horizontal that's actually in the piece, right? Jane at the table here. So, come a little bit closer. I'm just going to take out my Sharpies. And again, these are metallic silver Sharpies. Right? Maybe backwards, but it says metallic silver Sharpies. These are not white Sharpies. White Sharpies are paint Sharpies. You don't want paint. You want ink, right? You don't have to shake it. I'm shaking it like it's an outliner from 1982. What's wrong with me? Uh, it's just a Sharpie. So let's see, let me get, I'm not going to do the whole thing with you. I'm just going to trace around her jacket and her little bolero, right, 1820s style. And, and then I'll lift up and show you how it's going. Do a little bit of this. And I'm not shy at all about, I'm recording a video, Ted. See that? So I'll be able to trace up the whole thing and go right back in with the silver Sharpie like this. And I would say that's quite visible. I'd say that's no problem at all being able to read those lines. So I'm going to finish tracing. I'm going to make a small little color plan, just basic. And then I'm going to start hooking only because it threw up a bit of a question mark for me when I started to try to pull that thread out and it was that difficult to get it out. Um, it makes me feel like, ooh, how tight is this backing? So I'm going to finish doing this and then I'm going to just hook a little tiny bit of it with you so that we know for ourselves whether hooking with this fancy colored burlap is likely to be a problem or whether we have got the green light and we are good to go. One thing I will say that I think is fairly important, when you're doing this light on dark transfer and you plan to leave, so, or, or dark on light, 
if you plan to leave some of your background showing, like bare, unhooked, right, you just want to see the actual linen or whatever you've got, burlap in this case, make sure that you don't go outside the lines with your tracing, right? It's like the same thing as that eternal question about hooking. Do I hook inside the lines, on the lines, outside the lines? It does not matter. Just pick one and stick to it. With this, it matters more because as I'm putting in the details, right, if I go outside the line with every line, I'm going to have to hook to cover my line drawings, right, my tracing, and it might be that I have distorted or stretched um, the drawing, and it might be that it just doesn't really look the same anymore. So you want to be thinking about that um, when you're doing your tracing. As usual, I am, for projects for myself, I usually cut my strips. And I don't care if they're even, in fact, I like the thought that they're not super even. I'm just gonna give her a little purple Valero jacket. I just wanna be sure, now that I'm showing you this material, I wanna be sure, I can definitely see the pattern okay. That part worked fine. I wanna be sure that I can hook this okay. And let's see, I've got it on a tiny little frame. It is a little bit tight, I have to say but this is probably an eight cut that I just did with my scissors. It is definitely on the tight side. It's gonna work and I'm gonna, I'm gonna use it for sure, but it's definitely on the tight side. So be warned, at least if you get um, this, this burlap, what a lot of beautiful colors it comes in. I think I'm gonna have to hook, uh, cut my pieces to maybe something like a five. I might outline with this more like seven, eight size. It hooks up fine. It's just tighter than I thought, but that's not a bad thing for those of you who like to, to hook fine cuts. This is going to work out just fine. So tips for today, get that silver Sharpie out. If you're doing something uh, on a dark background and you're afraid that you're going to have trouble transferring it and seeing it, use the silver, silver Sharpie, not the white. And beware some of these colored burlaps like this one uh, from what was it? The Fabric Warehouse, something like that, um, whatever I said earlier, uh, quite tight. Kind of exciting, though, because it does make me think I could use some of my sock yarns and things like that. Interesting. Hey, I will see you next time at Ribbon Candy Hooking.